my name is Misty Kay. I'm a registered dietitian as well as an international board certified lactation consultant. I currently work for the Utah County Women and Infants and Children program. And today we'll be discussing the symphony pump. We'll be going over the parts you receive in your pump. We'll also be discussing the usage of the pump, how to clean your pump, and how to keep your milk supply up while using the pump. In addition, we'll be going over the pump report line, which will be explained to you at the end of the video. First, before you even start using your pump, you want to make sure you sterilize it. Inside your kit, you should receive the following pieces. You should receive two bottles. You can receive also a holder if you need that. You get two different sizes of the phalanges or the breast shields. You also receive two connectors, two lids, two membranes, two valves. You also receive an extra package of the membranes if the other membranes do tear. You should also receive the tubing and the membranes that go inside the pump. You want to check your membrane to make sure that it is not torn so that it, it does not have air leakage so there's no chance that your pump will work ineffectively. You take your valve and connect it to your connector. Then you screw it onto the bottle. Then you want to select the flange or, or breast shield that is correct for your size. It's according to nipple size, so you want to make sure that your nipple stays inside the flange without rubbing against the edges. Once you have selected the correct breast shield size, you connect it to your connector. Then you take your tubing and your membranes and place them inside the symphony pump. When you place them in the pump, you want to make sure you press firmly so they're in there tightly. So when you close it, it should snap. Once it snaps, um, your pump should be used effectively. Before we go on, we want to emphasize that this handle is only to be used for opening and closing your symphony. We do not like it to be held or pulled because it can break the pump itself. Now that you have all the pieces together, before we turn it on, we want to turn it around. Lift up the little door with the arrow and plug in the power cord. Also, if you received one of the bottle holders, you can place it in the back of the pump so that it stays secure. Next, turn on your pump, and the pump will automatically go into a phase called the stimulation phase, which helps to mimic an infant in that it will go a lot faster at first to help stimulate the milk letdown. Next, once your milk has let down, simply press the button with the little milk drop and the pump will go into the second phase, which is called the expression phase. After that, you can turn off your pump. To increase your milk supply, if your baby's in the NICU or for any other reason, one suggestion would be first, pump on both sides for 15 to 20 minutes. Then, take one bottle off or one shield off then pump on one side for three minutes while massaging and compressing and getting out any kind of pea size or any nodules you may feel. Then, then once you have pumped both sides individually, take both the shields off and you're going to hand express. And what you do with hand expression is you first go away from the areola, press into the breast, squeeze together and roll out toward the nipple. In this way you'll maximize the most milk production and help keep your milk supply up. After that, after you've completed pumping and it's time to clean, the way you clean your equipment is make sure every time anything that's touched the milk, just make sure you clean it with hot soapy water. It can also be boiling water or dishwasher. If you do have milk that goes inside the tubing you want to make sure you wash that and the way you air dry the tubing is actually quite simple after you have steamed it or boiled it um, in water or cleaned it in hot soapy water you simply place it back in 
and turn on the pump for two to three minutes and it will dry it. Make sure that before you store any of the pieces that it's completely dry. You don't want to store any wet pieces. To store your breast milk, remember the 555 rule. You can store your pump breast milk on the counter for five hours, in the refrigerator for five days, in the freezer for five months. It is required that you call to report the progress of your pumping within three days of when you first received the pump and every Monday until the pump is returned. The pump report phone number that you call on Mondays is located on the top of the form given to you. The questions will ask your name, your family ID number, your pump number, which is located on the back of your pump or pump case, how many times you are pumping in 24 hours, how long are you pumping each time you pump, how much breast milk you get from each breast, and the total amount. How many times do you latch the baby on and breastfeed in 24 hours? How long is the baby at the breast? What is the most current weight of your baby? How much breast milk and or formula is being given? And how is it being given to your baby, whether that be bottle, cup, spoon, NG tube, syringe, or SNS? If you have any concerns or other questions, please call our breastfeeding warm line number at 801-851-7312. If you do not call within 10 days of receiving the pump or your last call, the pump must be returned to the clinic.